Let's look now at the titration of a weak base with a strong acid and focus on four critical points along the titration curve, just like we did in the previous video on weak acid strong base titrations. At each of these points, we want to identify where we are on the titration curve in terms of the XY space, where we are in pH volume of titrant space, and think about the dominant species in solution at that point, as well as any reactions that they may engage in with water. So the first point to focus on is before any titrant is added at all. And for a weak base, at this point, we'll have a pH greater than 7. So I'm going to go ahead and mark 7 on this graph because we're going to need this point later. But for a weak base, our initial pH is going to be greater than 7. Reason being, we're dealing with a weak base, right? And so even before any titrant is added, when that base is dissolved in water, we're going to, to some degree, go forward to produce the conjugate acid of the weak base as well as hydroxide. This will be a reversible process because the base is weak, but it's the forward direction that drives the pH up above 7. Our titrant is the strong acid HCl, so as we add the titrant, the pH is going to decrease. After a very brief, relatively quick initial dip, we end up with a relatively flat region of the titration curve before the stoichiometric or equivalence point. In this region, we have appreciable amounts of both B, the base, and its conjugate acid, HB+. And since these two concentrations are on the order of one another, and at some point along this region those concentrations will be exactly equal, what we're dealing with here is a buffer region. At this point it's relatively easy to calculate at least the pOH of the mixture by applying pKb for the base and the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which says that the pOH is equal to pKb plus the log of the conjugate acid concentration divided by the base concentration. And these concentrations can be deduced using the volume of HCl we've added, its concentration, and the initial concentration of base if we know it. The pH continues to decrease more steeply as we add titrant until we reach the equivalence point, which is somewhere around here. At the equivalence point in a weak base titration, the pH is less than 7. This will always be true for titrations of weak bases with strong acids. To understand why, we only need to think about what species are present here. So, at the initial point, we started with mostly B, with a little bit of the conjugate acid and hydroxide in there due to partial dissociation of the weak base. At this stoichiometric point, we've added enough acid to completely consume all of that B, and so we're left with only HB+, at least before we turn on the reaction of this species with water. The HB+, that's left behind when the HCl reacts with all of the weak base B, reacts with water in a reversible way to form B, neutral B, the conjugate base, and H3O+. And just as we saw in the weak acid strong base titration, it's the production of this H3O+, that really drives the pH change. In this case, it's a decrease in pH relative to 7, resulting in a solution at the equivalence point that has a pH less than 7. Another way to think about this is that we've generated an acidic salt, Hb plus Cl minus, where Cl minus comes from the titrant. After the titrant transfers a proton to B, we end up with this acidic salt, Hb plus Cl minus. The reaction of that salt with water generates hydronium and drives the pH down. So this situation at the stoichiometric point is equivalent conceptually to a situation in which we started with the acidic salt Hb plus Cl minus, say as a solid, and dissolved it in water at a concentration equal to the original concentration of B at the initial point. This is useful conceptually because it means you can treat this situation at the equivalence point like a pH of a salt solution problem, which we've looked at previously. And the same is true, in fact, for weak acid strong base titrations. It's just that in that case, we were looking at the generation of a basic salt. We ended up generating A- and Na- was the counter ion in that case, right? That reaction generates, in the forward direction, hydroxide, which is going to drive the pH up, as well as HA. It's a reversible process, so we do need to consider equilibration and use an ice table and all that good stuff. But we can qualitatively understand why the pH increases through this reaction of that basic salt with water.
After the stoichiometric point, the pH of the analyte titrant solution continues to decrease and eventually levels off. The leveling off occurs for the same reason it occurs really in the weak acid strong base titration. We're limited to a minimum pH equal to the pH of the titrant. We can't increase the concentration of hydronium beyond whatever its concentration is in the titrant itself. It's also worthwhile here to think about what's going on with the species in solution. So at the equivalence point we had generated HB plus that reacted with water reversibly and this is important to form B and H3O plus which drove the pH below 7 at the equivalence point, right? As we continue to add H3O plus by introducing more and more HCl, we're driving this equilibrium back toward reactants, forming more HB plus such that at this point where the pH begins to level off, we have essentially entirely HB plus and we're just piling on H3O plus and water by adding more and more titrant to the analyte titrant mixture.